God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis. I want to thank God for all of you that are logging on to watch this ministry. It's a blessing to me to know that you are watching. Thank God for all of our new subscribers to our YouTube channel. I want you to know that I appreciate you as well. Amen. God is blessing us with new people that watch this ministry and uh, they subscribe. And for those of you that don't know, you, you can subscribe to this ministry uh, at uh, my YouTube channel, Clinging to Him. And also you can fr uh, friend me uh, at Facebook and Twitter and all of these places. And this message will come directly to you uh, when uh, when we broadcast. And thank God for you. we got new friends all the time. Every uh, uh, every day, it seems, we're, we're getting new friends. So our friends list is growing across the World Wide Web. And I thank God for each of you. Thank God for so many of our Figures family, the Figures family, who are watching this ministry. I appreciate you so very much. Uh, amen. Nothing like family. I, I, well, I, I tell you, I extended this family to all, the, all, of, the, all of those of you you who uh, listen to this ministry on a regular basis uh, all over this country, uh, Canada and uh, 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 Africa, talking about Kenya and South Africa and South Korea, uh, all of these places where you listen to uh, this ministry on the World Wide Web, uh, it's a blessing to me and I put my arms around you even now to let you know that I receive you and I love you with the love of the Lord. Well, shall we begin our study today in verse 1 of chapter 22? I encourage you to, uh, to stay with us. Very interesting uh, passage of scripture. We're going to go over a few things today. Uh, quite possibly we will get to the conclusion of this chapter if it's not too lengthy. Uh, because I want to, But I do want to share a few things with you out of this particular passage of scripture. Uh, as we go into uh, chapter uh Chapter 22 and verse 1, the Bible reads, And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, I am here. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thy loveth, and get thee into the land of Moriah, uh, and uh, offer him there uh, for a burnt sacrifice unto one. Uh, upon one of the mountains, which I will test thee, uh, I will tell thee. Well, uh, uh, such a hard test put on Abraham, but I want you to know God always knows what he is doing, uh, and God tested Abraham now. Uh, well, uh, uh, such, a, uh, such a thing, uh, you say, why would God test Abraham? I can't tell you every, every point and exactly why God does everything he does. Can't tell you that, but I do know uh, when God tests you, it's for a reason. Uh, and God had a test for Abraham, uh, and you got to understand, he got Abraham. Abraham's attention uh, and told him to go and offer up your son. Now this was the son by his wife. This was Isaac, the one that he had when he was already an old man. Uh, can you understand an old man an old man having a child and a, an old woman having a child uh, uh, when, they are, when they're 90 and 100 years old. Uh, and then God wants you to take that same child that was a miracle child uh, and go and offer him as a burnt, burnt sacrifice. Can you understand what faith that would take for anyone to do? Uh, well, this was a, a test of Abraham's faith. Uh, and I want you to know Abraham knew the voice of God. And uh, let me just cover a, a, a territory here just briefly uh, you I want you to know that when God speaks to you uh, you need to know his voice uh, I'm here to tell you that every voice that you hear is not God but when God speaks to you you need to respond and just say yes to the will of God because God has a plan and God uh, God will never do anything that's going to disrupt uh, uh, disrupt his plan uh, and having faith in God you got to understand uh, 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 God had promised Abraham so many things that he had promised even that Isaac was going to be the promised child of the one that uh, the blessing and the covenant would come through. Uh, so so you got to understand, having faith in God, uh, you need to know, number one, you need to know his voice. Uh, every voice that you hear is not God. Uh, Satan can put many things in our mind, uh, but when you have developed a relationship with God, uh, you know his voice from any other voice. Uh, well, uh, uh, God, God spoke <clears throat> 
It seemed like more in, in Bible days and uh, in the days of Abraham, but God speaks in the day that we live. He talks in, uh, to us uh, in the day that we live, uh, and you need to know the difference between God's voice and the, and the voice of Satan. Uh, uh, you hear so many people saying that they, they went out and killed people because they, 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 that God told them to do, do that. You better, you better examine some situations now. Uh, every voice that you hear is not God. Uh, God is not going to take them. Uh, tell you to go out and uh, uh, murder people without cause. He wouldn't tell you, well, he's not going to tell you to go out and murder anyway, any, anyone anyway. Uh, you got to understand the love of God, uh, but this is what God was doing. God was establishing something, uh, and uh, more than, more than, we can look at this more than one way. Uh, God was not only establishing something, uh, he was also getting a feel of what it's going to feel like uh, because he knew he was going to offer his son uh, in days to come. Uh, and I want you to know there was not a ram in the bush and when Jesus uh, hung on Calvary for us. Uh, but God, uh, uh, you got to understand, God suffered that to be so. This was his only son. Uh, this was a test of Abraham's faith, uh, but also a type of what would, that, uh, of what would come. <clears throat> Shall I read again? And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering uh, uh, upon, uh, upon one of the mountains, uh, which I will test thee. In verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, uh, and saddled his ass, uh, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, uh, and cut the wood for the burnt offerings, and rose up, uh, and went into the place uh, of which God had told him. Uh, can you understand? By faith, uh, he was on his way, took two of his uh, young men servants with him, uh, along with his son, uh, and the wood for the sacrifice, and all. Uh, and verse 4 it reads, And on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. Uh, this is where God wants me to do what he told me to do. Uh, and Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and I and the lad will go yonder uh, and worship and come again unto you. Uh, in other words, he didn't take the servants with him. Uh, he saw the place afar off, uh, told the servants to stay here. Me and the lad and I will go, go farther. Uh, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering that laid it upon Isaac his son. Uh, and he took the fire in his hand uh, and a knife. Uh, and he went both of them together. Well, shall we talk about it? Shall we talk about this now? That one verse, he took the, the wood of the burnt offerings <clears throat> and laid it upon Isaac his son. In other words, son, you carry the wood that I'm supposed to sacrifice you on. Laid it upon his son and he took the fire of his hand, uh, fire in his hand and the knife uh, and went both of them together. The fire in his hand. Now you got to understand, they didn't have matches uh, uh, back in the days of old. They didn't have matches like we have. Uh, and things, the light of fire, they had to be done the old way. Uh, or either, uh, uh, as he left them, uh, he had something that was burning so he could start the fire to burn the offering. I hope you got that now. Uh, in verse, uh, verse 7, uh, And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father. Uh, and he said, Here am I, uh, my son. And he said, Behold the fire of the wood, of the fire uh, and the wood. Uh, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Uh, uh, no doubt he saw his father burn uh, uh, burn offerings before, and here he's asking the question. We got everything here uh, to offer uh, to burn the offering, but we don't have the offering. What's going on here? Can you understand the uh, inquisitiveness of the son? In verse 8, and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God will provide, and indeed he will. He'll always provide. Uh, provide he will provide a way for you to do what he told you to do. He will provide a way. Uh, Sometimes we, we, we got it in our mind uh, how fixed God is going to do it. But let me let you know, when God tells you to do something, you don't know how he's going to bring it to pass. You 
don't know what the outcome or the end result of what you're doing is going to be. But by faith, if God told you to do it, you know down in your heart that it's going to be all right. If God told you to do it, you know in your heart that things will get better or things will be all right in the end. Well, verse 8 again, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Uh, well, not knowing that he was prophesying, but yet prophesying, God will provide. Uh, and he did, indeed he will. In verse 9, and they came to a place which God had told them of, and Abraham built an altar there, uh, and laid the wood uh, in order, uh, and bound Isaac, uh, his son, and laid him on uh, laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Can you imagine what faith he had? Because God said it now, and this is something of someone that he loved, loved so severely. Now, some of y'all don't know anything about loving a child in your old age. Well, maybe grandparents will know what I'm talking about. You already, you, you know, you up in age now. You know you're not going to have any children. Children, uh, and here this little one come along, uh, and and, uh, and uh, this is a, an extension of you. Uh, how much you love them, and how much you care for them. Uh, and if God told you to take any of your children, uh, most of us we would, we would. We, uh, uh, God, and I know this ain't you, but you gotta understand. Uh, Abraham obeyed God and did what God told him to do, all the way up. Now in verse ten, and Abraham stretched forth his hand uh, and took the knife to slay his son. Uh, he was going to carry this thing out. Uh, why? Because God said it, uh, and he knew the voice of God. Uh, now, that's the difference between Abraham and many other people. Uh, he knew God's voice. Uh, when you know God's voice, uh, you know uh, when you do it, uh, everything is going to be all right, and it's done by faith. Uh, you got to understand, by faith. By faith in who? By faith in God. You have a relationship with God and you know how he is. You know that he's going to bring you out. You know God is going to fix things. So by faith in God, he stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. In verse 11, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou has, has not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. In other words, God knew that Abraham loved him to the point that he would not hold anything from him, would not withhold anything from him, not even the son that he loved so much. Uh, he knew that Abraham uh, would uh, would do anything that he told him that he would do. Verse 12 again, and he said, lay not thine hand upon the, on the lad, neither do thou any, anything unto him. Uh, for now I know that thou feared God, uh, seeing thou has not withheld thy son, uh, thine only uh, son from me. Uh, can you understand? He knew that Abraham feared him. Uh, not only that, uh, Abraham knew uh, that he feared God. Uh, see, you got to understand, God already knows everything, but some things uh, he approved to you. Uh, Abraham knew that he, was, uh, that he feared God. Let's read verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, uh, and behold, behind him uh, a ram caught in the thickets uh, by his horns. Uh, and Abraham went and took the ram uh, and offered him up for a burnt offering uh, in the in the stead of his son. Uh, Abraham took the uh, looked over and saw a ram, uh, and he offered up that ram instead of his son. Uh, oh, what a blessing! Uh, God always has a way to bring things out all right. Uh, God. I can test you uh, and not tear up everything. Uh, can you imagine if Abraham would have went back to talk to Miss Sarah uh, and let her know that he sacrificed their son? Don't you know it would have been trouble in that house? Uh, well, you got to understand, God has everything worked out and everything fixed. Uh, uh, this family would have been dysfunctional. Uh, can you imagine what, what Isaac was thinking? Here, uh, There he is laying uh, upon that uh, on the altar, all tied up. Uh, and here's daddy 
he is with a knife getting ready to kill him. Uh, can you imagine what a dysfunctional family that would make? Uh, well, you got to understand, God has fixed that thing uh, and, and told Abraham, don't you do it. Uh, what a relief to Abraham and what a relief to Isaac. Uh, and, and uh, well, the, the ram didn't come out too well, but you got to understand, God had that thing fixed uh, to where he had a ram in the bush. Uh, preachers know what I'm talking about. If you if someone was supposed to preach many times and, and uh, they called you uh, and put you in that stead because that person couldn't make it. Uh, I know many times I've been offered, uh, I've been uh, uh, introduced as a sacrifice. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, they said I was a ram in the bush because I was there to preach the gospel. Uh, the other person was not there. Uh, well, that don't feel so good being all, uh, being introduced as a sacrifice. Uh, but you got to understand what they mean. Uh, God has something or uh, uh, someone to go in the stead uh, of you uh, and what you're facing. In verse 14, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. If you want to go and read Psalms 19 and 9, it'll give you a, a, a preface or a, a what that word Jehovah Jireh means. And study it out. One of these days I'm going to go down the line uh, and tell you the names of God and what they mean, what they actually mean. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. Uh, well, uh, this is what he called the name of the place. Jehovah Jireh. Uh, as it is said to this day, uh, the mount of the Lord, uh, it shall be seen. Uh, the mount of the Lord, uh, it shall be seen. Let's read on really quickly. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham uh, uh, out of heaven uh, the second time and said, uh, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, but because thou hast done this thing, and, and uh, hast not withheld my son, uh, thine only son, uh, that, in, uh, that in blessings I will bless thee, uh, and multiply it, I will multiply thy seed uh, as the stars of heaven, uh, and as the sands uh, which I uh, upon the seashore, which are upon the seashore, uh, thy seed shall possess the gate. Uh, of the of his enemies. Uh, well, you got to understand. Uh, God is making a promise because Abraham was obedient. Uh, he's saying something here. Uh, all of these things, he's letting Abraham know, I'm going to bless you. Uh, why? Because you love me. Uh, why? Because you're obedient to me. Uh, in verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed uh, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Uh, the, all of the nations of the earth is going to be blessed through you and through your seed. Uh, you got to understand what a word. Uh, we are actually talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, but all the nations, uh, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because uh, thou hast obeyed my voice, uh, because you obeyed me uh, in such a thing, uh, because you said yes to my will. Uh, you got to understand, you will be blessed. Uh, your seed will be blessed, uh, and all the nations of the earth is going to be blessed through you. Uh, in verse Verse 19, so Abraham returned unto his young men, and they arose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things that, that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, uh, Micah, she hath also born, uh, she has also born children unto thy brother Nahor, uh, Uz, uh, his firstborn, and Buzz, his, his brother, uh, and Kemuel, uh, his fa the, the father of Aram, uh, and uh, uh, Chizad, uh, and Hazel, uh, and Philadelphia, and Jildoth, and Bethuel, and Bethuel begot Rebekah. These eight Melchah did bear uh, to Nahor, Abram's brother. Uh, can you get this now? This was Abraham's brother. We're setting up a stage here. And his concubine, whose name was Riyama, Riyuma, uh, as she bore also Teba, and Giram, and, and Tadesh, and... and uh, uh, 
Meekai. Uh, you got to understand, uh, he's setting up a stage here now. Uh, you have to understand his son. Now we're talking about a process of time. Uh, uh, when Isaac began to grow older, uh, you got to understand, uh, well, it's time for him to get married. It's time for him to have a wife. Uh, and so God is setting up a stage and letting him know uh, that your brother, uh, he's had children. Uh, and he's going to send uh, send, uh, uh, send his servants there to find a real wife. Uh, we mentioned Rebecca. We're going to be talking about talking about her uh, in the chapter coming. But I want you to know God has, always has everything figured out. Uh, even in obscure situations. Uh, even in what we call death situations. Uh, God has things fixed. Uh, and he'll bring you out. Uh, he'll make everything alright. Uh, and you'll be okay and you'll be an overcomer. Uh, well, I want you to know that I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to talk to me for any reason, uh, you can write me at the Word with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 200483, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, Remember our toll-free number, one 267 0211. Contact us and you will not regret it. God will bless you. And I am looking forward to getting to know you. I'm looking forward when you respond to me, when you ask me a question. I promise you I will return that message. I will get back with you and answer any question you have. And thank God for you that send me that, that thumbs up or like me on the World Wide Web. It is indeed a blessing to me. Remember, I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.